McCormick during cultivator I'll, we're going to use today. We're going to cultivate for the second time today. It's uh, probably around 100 years old. <coughs> the old cultivators uh, have what they call grease cups instead of zerks on them. You fill this cup up with grease and as you screw it down it forces the grease down into wherever you need grease to be. And during the day as you need grease you can just turn this and tighten it down. This one also has a lever on it where you can move your rows farther apart or closer together, whatever you need to do. And uh, the old cultivators are, the newer ones and the tractor ones had spring trips. If you hit a rock, it would flip back. The old ones had a wooden peg. If you hit a rock, this wooden peg would break. You'd have to stop. You always had a few more wooden pegs in your toolbox. You'd wheel yourself another wooden peg and, and put it in here. Your cultivator is, uh, some of them have levers on or you can put your feet. This one has these two levers where you can steer the cultivator back and forth as you go. It has shields on it because when the corn is real small, the horses only have one speed and it protects the corn, the dirt from covering the corn up. Now sometimes uh, the dirt will come over the top of the shield and cover the corn and, and uh, somewhere along the way someone took a pair of license plates and put on top of this uh, and bolted them on top of the shields here. And if you notice, these license plates is a South Dakota, the year is 1932. I always carry a vice grip and some wrenches with me and, and as I said before I always carry a few wooden pegs and a knife where if you break a wooden peg you can stop, whittle one down and put it in here. We paid $40 for this cultivator and um, it was uh, much easier to operate than the first one that we had so we've had it used it every year for a long time. Just from research we've done on the cultivator and from photos that we've found we believe that this uh, riding cultivator is a number 41 riding model that was manufactured around 1919 and as Alan mentioned, it includes wooden pe pegs for tripping shanks when rocks or other obstacles get in the way. Babe and Bob are the team that we're using to cultivate today. They're a young team and um, they are fast walkers. They've got lots of energy and it's a pretty nice day to be out here. So they're making their way across the field pretty quickly. It's interesting to note that the first horse-drawn cultivators did not have a seat for the farmer to ride on and when the cultivators that featured a seat first came out, many farmers thought that they wouldn't use it because they believed the horses had enough work to do without having to pull the farmer along and give him a ride too. As far as we know, the first uh, writing cultivators were available about 1878. They could be purchased through the Ohio Cultivator Company in Columbus, Ohio. And Harlow Stahl was credited with designing those first writing cultivators. According to historic documents, it was about 1930 when tractor-mounted cultivators started taking over and horses and the horse-drawn implements began to be retired. 